Hi, welcome to the video guys. My name is Pushpinder Gill. Uh, so today we're going to be uh, starting with the topic called multicollinearity. Uh, in this topic, uh, I will be just be giving you the introduction of the topic and then in the further videos we're going to understand this in further detail. So uh, multicollinearity. So this is actually one of the problems that actually arise in our uh, regression model, right? So I suppose you watch watched the video on the multiple regression model in which we showed uh, how to uh, how to actually estimate, you know, how to find these uh, population parameters uh, and uh, you know how to estimate the different uh, variables in an equation. So I'm going to start with a very basic model here. So I'm going to say, you know, let's suppose y is equal to uh, beta one x one plus beta two x two. So I'm just going to uh, have three different variables plus an error term that's for sure so this is actually let's suppose my mul uh, you know my multi -reg uh, multiple regression model uh, now one of the problems that is usually faced uh, it's it's by the name of multicollinearity as you can clearly see it has this word collinear here now what do you mean by collinear uh, collinear means a perfect collinear relationship so let's suppose uh, and a perfect collinear relationship would be y is equal to ax plus b now this is actually a perfect uh, collinear relationship between x and y now one assumption that is there in our uh, multiple regression model is that these x1 x2 and x3 so this is an assumption uh, that is there that is x1 x2 and x3 in fact all the x variables uh, are independent of each other means uh, you know uh, you know the 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 variables are completely independent of each other they uh, one one value of the variable will not affect the other value of the variable uh, however uh, when this assumption is violated when this is violated then we have a problem of multicollinearity right so you know how this is going to get violated you know let's suppose if I say these x1, x2, and x3, you know, they are in some some sort of uh, you know linear relationship, you know, and you know some sort of relationship that they have, uh, you know, it can be that you know x1 can be equal to x2 plus x3. It can very well be that x1 minus x2 plus x3 is equal to zero. So it can be anything. So uh, how do you define that relationship? Uh, you define that relationship like you know you know you have this. This way, you know, you can have the relationship, right? Uh, all the way, if you have, let's suppose, k, k, k terms, then you can, you can have this relationship where this, uh, this, this lambda can actually take any value, right? So when this occurs, you know, whenever there is this uh, relationship uh, that occurs between uh, these, these x variables, uh, then there is a problem in your results, right? So we're going to discuss what all problems arise. For well, first of all, we are trying to understand what multicollinearity is. When this case exists, this is a, this is a case of perfect collinearity, right? So this is actually a, a case of a perfect collinearity. So uh, in usual, in real life, you don't actually get uh, perfect collinearity. Uh, you know, whenever you see, whenever you have a data, you know, it might not be completely collinear with each other uh, sometimes uh, you can have not so perfect collinearity uh, in in the real terms so you know in in those broader terms then what you can do is you can actually just add a error term to it right so what you can do is you can you can just add an error term to it like this right so you know there's always going to be you know some sort of uh, you know not you know some sort of an error term here as well so that is what we're going to add. So this over here is, is going to be labeled as, you know, less than perfect, uh, less than perfect multicollinearity, right? So this is uh, going to be labeled as less than perfect multicollinearity, right? So uh, th th these kind of implications of, uh, you know, uh, you know, these kind of perf uh, implications of perfect collinearity are quite serious. You know, if this if this exists, then you know uh, your uh, your least square estimators are not going to work 100%. Uh, however, if this exists, then you know we can make our least square estimators work. Uh, that is something that we're going to be learning in the future videos. Uh, let's take a simple example here. You know, let's let's uh, let's try to take a simple example. 
let's say yeah, we we try to estimate this model wherein we have uh, the consumption and beta 2 into the income the wealth and the error term right so in this in this model so i'm just you know i'm just taking a simple example to uh, you know so that we can understand what multicollinearity is uh, you know this is what our model is in fact you know, i've written two wrong okay fine okay so this is let's suppose our model here and in this model what i say is that uh, let's say c is actually the consumption uh, consumption of a family or you know of an individual that any anything that you can say y is let's say the income and the w let's say is equal to the wealth in this case uh, c is actually the dependent variable something uh, that is derived from y and w and uh, these both are explanatory variables right so something that explains the value of consumption right so if you run a multiple uh, linear relationship model on this and you find out the value of uh, beta 1 and beta 2 so beta 1 is something that actually represents uh, you know consumption of someone so this actually represents consumption uh, with uh, of someone with no income you know you know as you can see clearly see that uh, if y if y i is 0 and w i is 0 beta beta 1 would just be consumption of someone with no income and beta 2 over here uh, you know it tells us the change in consumption uh, it, it tells us the change in consumption if uh, we increase the value if we increase the income by one unit right so it tells us the change in consumption if you increase the income by one unit and beta 3 over here as this is associated with the wealth it tells us the impact or you know imp impact or change in consumption uh, when you increase the wealth by one unit as it's, it's denoted with v, uh, denoted with w so it, it tells the change in consumption it tells the change in consumption if your wealth increases by if the wealth changes by a unit right so just gonna write a little short here right so uh, if you run a regression model on this and you know if you look at the data you would you will be able to realize that uh, a person with high income a person with high income is gonna have high level of consumptions right so you know a person with high incomes is gonna have a high level of consumptions uh, so income and consumption so I'm just going to denote it with y and c so income and consumptions are directly related with each other however you'll be able to see that income and wealth are also related with each other you know a higher the income higher the wealth levels are going to be are going to be there so which is why you can clearly see this is actually a problem of multicollinearity uh, that means uh, you know there, there can be a perfect uh, collinear equation uh, you know you can say someone's wealth level can be 10 times or let's say 15 times someone's income or it can be a case of uh, a kind of not so perfect linear not so perfect multicollinear uh, problem wherein you can say you know one person's income is 12 times wealth is 12 times the income other person's uh, uh, you know wealth is kind of like eight times its income so on an average you know on an average you know when we talk about overall everyone's we can say everyone is round about you know 10 times their income so again you know in in real time in real life these kind of data th this kind of data is something that you can expect to get however we can clearly see that there exists a relationship between wealth and the income right so so if you want to if you want to run them uh, you know you know find out the effect of income on consumption we might have to keep the wealth as a constant however we won't be able to keep that way because if we change the income the wealth is automatically going to change that means there is uh, a multicollinearity there is pro there is a problem in this model so this way we won't be able uh, you know we, we won't be able to answer the question with the data as ha at hand uh, that means the the coefficient of the multiple regression model will not be we won't be able to estimate the coefficients uh, of the multiple linear regression model you know when it when it's a case of perfect collinearity however if it's not so perfect still things can be worked around which we're going to do in the in the in the coming future videos uh, in the next video i'll be giving you the technical proof of uh, multicollinearity 
So I suppose you're understanding what I'm trying to say here. Uh, in this video, we understood what multicollinearity is. Uh, that's it's 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 basically in in a layman's in the layman's language, it is uh, that when your explanatory variables are in kind of in sort of a relationship with each other, right? So you know, so if they 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 can have a linear equation, li linear relation, or any other relation. So they actually are in a relation with each other. So that means the income is gonna get affected by wealth, or wealth is gonna get affected by income. Then there is a problem of multicollinearity. That means uh, our t t t statistics and our f values are going to be insignificant. Right, so you know we're going to be understanding the implications of uh, multicollinearity in the future videos. So I suppose you're understanding this point here, guys. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and uh, this would be our email. Ad this would be our email address, perfectsports89 at gmail.com, to give us your valuable feedback. Our Facebook page uh, for connecting with us, and our website to explore more about us. So thank you very much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.